talk about musical instruments. Musical instruments. Sometimes you think of them as like, oh, band class, orchestra, oh, it's just another thing. Now, musical instruments are something special. You got to think about their purpose. What's the purpose of a musical instrument, of course? It's to make sound. Actually, uh, hopefully it makes sounds that please you. So how does this all work? Well, you got some kind of instrument, whatever it is. Maybe you have a horn of some sort. Here's the horn. Yeep. Maybe the horn has a couple buttons on it. Presumably the horn has a player. That player's going to put some real effort in as they're playing. Hold the horn, stand, play us some music. What's going on here? Well, the player actually blows air into the horn. And something happens to that air while it's in the horn. And so then what happens is something comes out of this. Fortunately, it is not the player's breath that actually comes out and travels off in this direction. So something comes out of this. Let's put a little arrow representing it. It heads off this way. Actually, what comes out is not mass, if you remember. Yes, what comes out is a sound wave. But what a sound wave really is, is energy. You get energy moving out from this horn. And in fact, this moving away process is what we called transmitting. Maybe we'll type it up nicely. There we go. So, transmit. The sound is transmitting. What's happening is almost like a domino effect. Air molecules here are bumping ones here, which are bumping here. Bump, 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 bump. And they send energy. They send a vibration along. And uh, as it transmits, hopefully this at some point will come along. And I'm going to draw a big version of you. Come along and strike you in. There's your funky ear. Here's your very large head. You'll see why we made this very large in a little bit. Okay. And so a lot of things are going on here, actually. So you get this sound wave transmitting, but we've talked about this. It's not just transmitting. Actually, as it transmits, you can sometimes draw this like this. These little markers represent the sound wave. They actually spread out, or if you remember, they diffract. So the sound really starts to look more like this. You get this spreading effect of the sound. Sorry, my drawings are not great. But you're getting the sound transmitting, and you're also getting the sound spreading out. And in fact, so much so that if somebody was sitting back here, the sound would, in fact, reach around to them as well. So that we called diffraction. So not only is the sound transmitting or heading forward, but the sound is also diffracting. Here we can color code these. Diffraction will go with the purple. Let's have transmit. Yeah, we'll make this little arrow black. So we'll transmit, go with the black. Good. So it's diffracting, it's transmitting. And as it's transmitting, it's heading vaguely towards your head. You're in the way. So as energy travels towards your head, not mass. So rest assured, when the sound ultimately reaches your ear, you can feel good that it is not the player's breath that is entering. However, when you get to your ear, even if your head is turned around the other way, there are obstacles in the way. Notably, your head is in the way. Your ear is in the way. Your outer ear, the ear lobe, and all that business. It's all in the way. Sound needs to make it beyond there. If the sound stops here, well, then it was never really sound for you to listen to. So, what happens? Well, here, the sound has to, in fact, we can jump this ahead, jump the diffraction ahead. It's over here now. It actually has to wiggle its way in a sense around all these obstacles so we're getting more diffraction and so as the sound diffracts around your head or around your ear it starts to make it inside it is still traveling through air and now we're in our outer ear in the outer ear of course you have your let's go over here you get your ear canal the ear canal leads in this way it's probably a little more narrow, a little more waxy than what I'm drawing right there. But all in all, it's just, let me open up this hole here. It's just a tube connecting your middle ear to the outside world. 
So, in the sound transmits, diffracting as it goes, until it hits something called your eardrum. Now, we talked about what sound can do, what waves can do. And so, when it hits your eardrum, some of that energy is absorbed. And you'll see that in vibrations of your eardrum. This little eardrum will start to vibrate back and forth. In fact, its vibration will match these wave fronts, we call them. Every time one of these hits it, it pushes in, and then it rebounds. Next one hits it, pushes in, rebounds, like being rapidly pushed on a swing. So here's the first hand, here's the next hand. This happens repeatedly. So this little thing is getting pushed and rebound, pushed and rebound. Some of that energy is absorbed here, and some of it actually transmits through. So where does it transmit? If you remember, we talked a little about the middle ear. And so the middle ear here, this thing connects. We had our ossicles. So these three little bones, terrible drawings, but don't judge me too harshly. So the, you had your hammer, your anvil, your stirrup. And then these leaned on your cochlea, which I'm also going to draw pretty terribly. But basically it was kind of a curled up snail looking thing. And all the while, let's make this thinner. All the while, the sound is continuing to transmit. So it transmits into these bones where they vibrate, which then transmits. There's a little window here, they call it. And there's fluid inside. And so it transmits in there and actually shakes the fluid. And so there's a special type of transmission that we studied also. So all through here, air, 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 air. Now the sound is actually transmitting into skin, into bone, into fluid. We called that, if you remember, change the colors, we called that refraction. So that's a special type of transmission. All that's going on in here where it actually refracts. So refracts is you go into a new medium and so the sound waves actually will often bend and change direction. Okay, and that's going on in this little middle and inner ear. But of course, we're not there yet. This then, as you shake the fluid in here, there are tiny little hairs. We learned about those too. Let's make those tan. Why not? It'll be very hard to draw here. But these tiny little hairs in here, here they are. I know they look like teeth, but... And those hairs waggle back and forth. And when they do, they actually connect then to nerves, the neurons. And these connect directly and are part of this big, mushy thing here you have in the middle called your, yes, your brain. So these are all part of this, here we go, this big, mushy, great thing up here. Come on, mushy, great thing. And so they connect in there, and then somewhere as they connect, you get this amazing experience of sound. So somehow here, these connect, and you get chemicals moving, you get energy moving inside your brain, and ultimately the best thing I could say is this. So, okay, you have the experience of sound. So what does that all mean? Well, maybe your eyeballs over here, your eyeballs over here, and suddenly you hear that sound, and you were hanging out, and suddenly this turns to this. All right. You might even say something funny. You might even start wiggling your arms and your legs a little bit. So... The truest thing to say about the experience is it changes you. And let us not forget, by the way, that throughout this process, particularly in here, we also are getting reflection. So the sound is oh, the sound is bouncing off the walls of your ear canal, off your outer ear. 2C reflect, huh? There we go, 1C reflect. So we're also getting reflection in there. So look at all this. 
And so what's really uh, special here is that the whole purpose of the musical instrument to make sound is really somehow you get a device that will push on air and that push gets transmitted, diffracts as it goes, diffracts around obstacles, spreads out to reach you, reflects as it enters your ear and diffracts some more, then refracts through your middle ear, your inner ear, and that energy, not mass, that energy, not the player's breath, but something they did to the surrounding medium, the air, that energy travels then through nerve impulses to your brain and that makes you dance or it makes you smile. So sound fundamentally, sound is about air or really any sort of medium. Of course, typically we do air. Of course, the medium could be water. It could be solids like say wood, steel, that part's not important. What's important is most of the time we're listening to music, the sound is traveling through air. So when we think about musical instruments, we are not <clears throat> so much focused on, oh, wait a minute, it makes the air vibrate. Of course it does. All the instruments make the air vibrate. When we focus more on the instruments in the following slides, we're going to get into, well, how do you get this air over here. How do you make this happen? Then we classify different instruments based on how they actually get air to start vibrating such that it will transmit, reflect, diffract, refract, and ultimately get you dancing. Because at the end of the day, the only real reason we have musical instruments is so that you get this moment. That's right. 